Hey everyone, today's lesson from Health Ed Solutions is on emergency medical services. Don't forget to visit us online at healthedsolutions.com to certify or recertify your ACLS, PALS, BLS, or NRP 100% online. Now let's get started. The second link in the STEMI chain of survival pertains to the actions of the EMS providers. They perform rapid diagnosis, treatment, initial stabilization, and eventual transport of patients to a capable facility. They support the patient's airway, breathing, and circulation. They should monitor the patient's vital signs and obtain a 12-lead ECG. They may need to perform CPR and rapid defibrillation in patients suffering cardiac arrest. Oxygen. Initial pre-hospital therapies must include oxygenation and ventilatory support when necessary. Oxygen supplementation is titrated to maintain an oxygen saturation of 94% and above. This is especially important when the victim shows signs of heart failure, respiratory distress, or low oxygen saturation, less than 94%, or if arterial oxygen saturation is unknown. Aspirin. A common pathophysiologic effect of ACS is thrombus formation that causes significantly diminished perfusion to certain portions of the myocardium. Aspirin is an inhibitor of thromboxane A2 production, thereby preventing thrombus formation. To stabilize these patients, providers can give 160 mg to 325 mg of aspirin to inhibit platelet function and prevent coronary occlusion. Aspirin should be chewed by the patient. Aspirin suppositories are also available if the patient cannot chew. Providers must question the patients about the presence of comorbidities that are contraindications for aspirin therapy. Blood dyscrasias and gastrointestinal bleeding are examples of contraindications. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are contraindicated in patients with ACS. For example, COX-2 selective drugs, Vioxx, Celebrex, increase the risk of mortality, reinfarction, hypertension, heart failure, and myocardial rupture. Nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is used to improve myocardial perfusion by dilating arteries and veins. This can reduce preload in the ventricles to lessen the burden on the heart afflicted with ACS. It also reduces chest pain or discomfort, thereby reducing the patient's metabolic demand. Nitroglycerin must be used with caution in patients with inferior wall myocardial infarction or right ventricular infarction. Nitroglycerin has the potential to induce hypotension, bradycardia, or tachycardia. Its effect is potentiated with concomitant use of sildenafil, Viagra that can induce severe hypotension which does not respond to vasopressor treatment. Therefore, it is important to question patients regarding their use of erectile dysfunction medications. Opiates Morphine is an opiate that provides relief from chest pain and anxiety. Anxiety worsens the symptoms of ACS because it increases the patient's metabolic demands. Its vasodilatory effects reduce left ventricular preload and left ventricular afterload. Hence, opiates can reduce myocardial oxygen demand and catecholamine release. It also helps to redistribute blood volume in patients with acute pulmonary edema. Box 3. The third link in the STEMI chain of survival corresponds to the immediate assessment and treatment which occurs in the ED, emergency department. Once EMS has brought the victim to the ED, the first 10 minutes is crucial. The EMS responders should promptly report their findings and any interventions provided to the ED team. The team will obtain vital signs, hook the patient up to a cardiac monitor, check the patient's oxygen saturation and establish intravenous access if not yet performed by the EMS team. They review and perform a targeted clinical history and physical exam. The ED team also completes the fibronolytic therapy checklist asking the appropriate questions to determine if the patient is a candidate for fibronolytic therapy. Other valuable information such as blood work, cardiac markers, electrolytes, complete blood counts, coagulation studies, etc. must be obtained. A chest x-ray should be obtained in less than 30 minutes. If not done in the pre-hospital setting, 
the ED team must provide oxygen supplementation, aspirin, nitroglycerin and or morphine, as well as any other treatments deemed necessary. The team must ensure there are no contraindications to these therapies. That's it for our lesson today. Thanks for watching and remember to check out our website at healthedsolutions.com for free content or to get certified or recertified online.